In modern PHP, Composer is a very useful tool. And so if you want to build Composer packages uh, to reuse in your own projects, that can be a, a kind of a difficult situation. So one of the things I've, I've learned recently was that uh, you could actually develop locally in a very easy manner. Uh, so I wanted to kind of explain how that is and, and show you how to set that up. So uh, right you see right now is a uh, base install of Laravel. Like no, nothing else has been installed. It's just a standard Laravel installation. Uh, but then I also have set up the beginnings of a another uh, package or a package that I want to create. And so that's what the package to test is. And package is just a Laravel installation. So normally, you know, you would create like GitHub repository, connect that to packagist, and then you could install it in your uh, Laravel application. And you would have to do all that to test or you'd have to try to do something else. It's kind of a pain and a lot of steps just to be able to test something or to iterate on something. So doing it this way, we can actually just work locally and make changes locally and we can iterate on our package in a much smoother workflow, which is really great. Uh, so the way to set this up is that we need to go to our editor and I got the two folders here already open in Sublime. So this is just the package, which is a layer of installation. And this is the package we're building that we want to test and work in. So what we want to do is set up the package to auto load automatically uh, with composer. And so we're going to do that by just adding the auto load block to our composer.json for the package, right? Not for Laravel installation, but for our package. And we're going to do, we're going to follow the PSR for standard. Uh, and then whatever you want your namespace to be, and then the path to um, that to, to your code. So in this instance, let's say we're building a uh, cart package and we want our namespace to be cart and we want that to go into a folder uh, called cart. So we're going to create a folder here, cart, and this is basically where all of our code is going to begin to be stored. Uh, so we can go ahead and just create this just so we can have something that we can see either works or doesn't work, right? So we're going to set up our... Um, our like main class file here, which should be pretty straightforward. There's not a lot going on. Uh, okay, so we're just gonna get the constructor. So let's just say name or something be passed in. Uh, we'll create this. All right, this is all pretty standard boilerplate stuff that you know isn't that big a deal, but whatever. Okay, so now we've got our namespace cart, our cart uh, class, which we could make this an eloquent model. This could be anything. Right now, it's pretty much just a plain old PHP object that doesn't really do a whole lot, right? So uh, now if we wanted to bring that into our package, right? And since I have this set up uh, on Valet, this is already available to us, um, you know, as we can see this in our browser. So we can use that as a way to test what's going on here. So if we come into the web uh, route and we were to die and dump, say something like new cart cart, and we need to pass in a name. So we'll just say, you know, test cart, something like that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we come back to our app and we try to load that. We're going to get class cart cart not found. And that's because right, right now, the way these are set up, this is our Laravel application. And then this at the same level, is our package that we're building. So of course our Laravel application and composer within, or the composer autoload within the Laravel application that we've installed has no idea about this uh, package that we're working on, right? And here's where we said we could go into, like we create a GitHub repository, push this up there, connect that to packages, let it get published, and then make our changes here, save them, commit them, push them up, and then update the new release, put that out into pack, or it gets pushed to, to packages, and then we'd be able to pull that down into our Laravel application. But if we're just trying to develop this package, I mean, that's a ton of work just to be able to see like a small change and make sure it works properly, right? So what we want to do is we want to somehow connect the package here into our Laravel application so that we can just work directly here see the changes, iterate on it. And then once we get it where we want, we want to be able to push that up and uh, then release something 
you know, so that we do it all at like one big step as opposed to each little change. Once we get it like a first push of our package up there and get it out, then we, uh, we don't want to, we don't, we want to do them all more like at once rather than like every little step. Right. So how are we going to get this to work now? Normally we would do like a composer require that would pull in from packages, the package, uh, into our composer.json file, but we don't necessarily want to do that or we can't do that right now because we haven't even created this in packages, right? So uh, another feature of composer that we want to use is that we want to, um, we want to create what's called, I guess, a path repository. I don't think uh, Laravel comes with any of those out of the box. So we're going to add a new part of our composer file. We're going to create a repositories um, property, or actually, I guess this is an array, not an object. Alrighty. Uh, this is an object, though, and that's going to have a type that's called path. And then we need to tell it where that's located. So this is actually a path, not a URL. Um, but right now, it's not our real importance. So we want to go into this package to test folder. Okay. And so that's the name of the folder that I have it as you could have this as whatever this, this path, this URL or, or path needs to correctly um, match wherever it's located on your system. So then uh, the one last thing we need to do. So we're going to save that. Let's uh, I guess we can hop so we can look here. So in our composer, we have this name for the package. So this is kind of what it would be on packages. So we need to bring that into our composer.json here, and we're just going to add it in the require block. And we want pretty much any version of it that we can get. We don't really care at this point. So now we're going to jump to the package directory, which is really just our application. I just have it called package because I was working on this for this video. Uh, now we're going to say composer install and with any luck, uh, we might have this added. Maybe not. And let's see if we come back and load this. Still not there. Okay. So let's see what's happening here. Uh, I think the lock file is out of date. So maybe we just need to delete that and then do a composer install. What happened? I think I just deleted it and then saved the file immediately. Classic. <laughs> All right, so let's do this. Composer install. And we should see all the, or hopefully we'll see something get installed or changed. But see, uh, in this process, Composer is going to do all the sim linking for us between our package that we're building. Okay, so then you might run into this problem, which is another thing that I think a lot of people run into with Composer. Uh, so it's saying that our minimum st stability in our composer.json for uh, the Laravel application isn't the the one in our package that we're building doesn't satisfy the requirement of our application. So this one's actually a pretty simple fix. Again, this is just we need to add this while we're building this. Uh, and once the package is published, we really won't need this. But since we're still in the process of developing this, we need to add a minimum stability uh, and I can and just point it to dev. And that should allow us to install it into our application and sim link the package we're building into our standard install of Laravel. So now I guess it's reinstalling all the packages because we deleted the composer.lock. And if you see in the last one here, the package that we're building is called a Huggins slash package to test. And we're sim linking that from the path that we provided. So now with any luck, when we come back here, we should be able to access that class and we are right. So now we have access to all of these classes as if they are in I mean, you can see that this is a sim link, right? And if we actually go into our vendor directory, uh, let's see, actually, I guess it doesn't even, it's not, it doesn't even look uh, sim linked. It actually just pulls it in 
all right there it is there's a sim link okay so that now this is sim linking uh the contents of the package of test into this package.test folder for us and that handles it for us and then we're able to build in our application with this being all separate now benefit of this right is that um so normally if you were to like build something and you're like oh that would make a really good standalone package let's say you have a model uh service provider um you know maybe like some other bunch of classes in here like say a bunch of events or uh commands of some type maybe you have a console command as well all of those files now are uh, in your application now you can go through the process of extracting them uh, changing the namespaces updating that and turning it into a package you can but if you set if you already have an idea that this is something that you want to be a package you can start out like this where it's completely separate and you can work and iterate on it and build it out and then when you're done all of your code is already separate and you would just publish you would just take this turn it into a git repository uh, most likely push it to GitHub, sim or connect that to packages, and then publish it that way. And then you can start bringing that into your applications uh, in many different ways. Uh, so let's see. Uh, another thing we could do, let's see. If we wanted uh, something like contracts. So we have something that needs a contract. Uh, we can come in here, create a new file, which is going to be, let's see, cart item maybe since uh, we probably need a um, we would need some sort of interface to make sure that anything that gets added to our cart follows a certain interface so that we can use it so we'll call this one cart item oops what happened there okay and we're just gonna do a couple simple things. Let's say like name is a function that we want defined. Oops. And we also want a function for price, right? Okay, so now that's in our, uh, we added a contracts folder and we have our cart item in there. So now if we go back to our application, right? This should still work because we didn't really change much. Um, now, if we come here and let's say we want to use the cart contracts cart item, this should work. And let's say we need this to be a cart item. Now, since we're not passing that in, right, it must be an instance of contracts cart item. Uh, that's because in the, our application, we're just creating, we're just passing a string, right? So we're not even creating anything that has that interface. So another thing we might wanna do is create another like kind of plain old PHP thing just for the sake of showing that this works. Uh, we're gonna add a namespace of cart. Class is gonna be product. And it doesn't extend, it implements our cart item interface so we want to use our cart contracts cart item interface uh, which means right that now we need a function name that returns something our test name this is not at all how this should actually work but for the sake of this example and we'll say uh, twenty five dollars right uh, what is the issue opening oh is there just spaces there okay so now we have this uh, class product that implements our cart item interface that comes from our package and if we were to come over here and we were to create a new, let's say product equals new cart products, uh, I guess I don't think we, 
have a constructor on that. Right. Okay. So now if we were to pass in our product and we, all right. So now we have our product here. Um, I guess that works. So it has to be that name. These all should be product or actually these should all probably be items. And this should actually probably be this. And let's see. So now there we go. We're getting our array and our products. Uh, ah, well, whatever. Uh, let's just say public name for the moment and public price. Although kind of defeats the purpose of having those setters, but whatever. Now we can actually ex extend this and see that we have our, uh, we have a cart with a bunch of items in it. Uh, so there you go. Like, uh, so now, like I said, this is all separate and we have are testing this in our application, but we haven't had to push our package up to GitHub. We haven't had to publish it to packages. We haven't had to worry about any of that. We can just develop this package locally. However we want very easily using composer to help us tie two folders basically together. Um, and then we're able to work within our application using our local package, develop it how we want it to test it, do all that kind of stuff. Um, and not have to mess with like editing stuff within a vendor. Cause like how many times have you done it that way too, right? Where you want to make a change to a package. So you go into the vendor directory, you edit the files there. And then you try to remember what files you changed, what changes you made. And then you go maybe copy down a fork of a repository. You make those changes and maybe you go make a pull request. This way you could actually clone that repository down. You could sim link it using composer into your application, just like you are, um, you know, just as you normally install it. And then you could make your changes separate to yours and you wouldn't have to keep track of all the changes you made, copy them into other things. You would just work out of that directory, which I think is a lot better and a lot smoother way to make packages and a lot easier to work with. So anyway, that was the only thing I really wanted to show here uh, was how to set up your packages so that you can work with them nice and easy. And then maybe I'll at some point show how to actually publish a uh, full package. But that was pretty much it, and there you go.